Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by First Paw Coffee Company, specializing in private label premium blend coffee. If you're serious about coffee, you should check it out. First Paw Coffee's passion is high quality small batch roasted coffee. They take the extra time to taste and get everything perfect before they release new blends. They aim to bring you a cup of happiness each time you pour yourself some coffee. Find out more at ak.dog slash free and enter for a chance to win some First Paw Coffee prizes, a book from our collection and tote bag. One winner will be selected at random each month. That's ak.dog slash free. Dedicated dog lovers tend to be very kind people. We share our hearts and homes, and for some lucky pups, even the foot of our beds with our canine pals. Surely there is nothing wrong with sharing our favorite foods with them too, right? Well, not necessarily. Many of the foods such as fruits and vegetables that humans digest just fine, can wreak havoc on a dog's body, causing severe health problems. On the other hand, some of the foods people eat can be introduced to a dog's diet just fine and even provide health benefits, such as joint strength, better breath, and allergy immunity. But... Before giving your dog foods that you crave, listen up and you will learn which foods are safe and which can send your dog straight to the vet. What are some of your canine buddies' favorite snacks? Our two Siberians, Bodie and Reagan, like a bunch of stuff. In fact, do you remember that Life cereal commercial from the 1980s with the little kid named Mikey? Bodie, much like Mikey, likes everything. Bodie and Reagan love the occasional Nilla wafer, cheese, pizza, popcorn, a bite of vanilla ice cream, and did you know that every night before bed, they each get a few Skittles candies? So, On today's show, we are talking about human foods for dogs, the do's and don'ts, and if you stick around until the end, you'll learn about a breed that makes our top five list as an adventure dog, and they are known to herd fish into nets, retrieve lost tackle, and act as a messenger between ships and shore. Can you guess which breed it is? I'll give you a little hint. A former president had one named Bo. From First Paw Media, sponsored by Alaska Dog Works Professional Canine Training Center in Anchorage, Alaska. This is Dog Works Radio, committed to families and their dogs to build lifelong and fulfilling relationships. Visit our website at dogworksradio.com. Now, here are your hosts, Robert and Michelle Forto. Hello and welcome to Dog Works Radio. This is your host, Michelle Forto, and I'm the lead trainer of Alaska Dog Works. Here, we help humans and their dogs have better relationships. Today, we are going to learn which are safe and not so safe foods for dogs. We have quite the list. Before we get started, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Then you'll never miss an episode. Let's get started. Almonds. No, dogs should not eat almonds. Almonds may not necessarily be toxic to dogs like pecans, walnuts, and macadamia nuts are, but they can block the esophagus or even tear the windpipe if not chewed completely. Salted almonds are especially dangerous because they can increase water retention, which is potentially fatal to dogs prone to heart disease. Bread. Yes, dogs can eat bread, small amounts of plain bread, no spices, and definitely no raisins. Won't hurt your dog, but it 
also won't provide any health benefits either. It has no nutritional value and can really pack on the carbohydrates and calories just like in people. Homemade breads are a better option than store-bought as bread from the grocery store typically contains unnecessary preservatives, but it's best to avoid it altogether. Cashews. Yes, dogs can eat cashews. Cashews are okay for dogs, but only a few at a time. They've got calcium, magnesium, antioxidants, and proteins. But while these nuts contain less fat than others, too many can lead to weight gain and other fat-related conditions. A few cashews make a nice treat, but only if they're unsalted. Cheese. Yes, dogs can eat cheese in small to moderate quantities. As long as your dog isn't lactose intolerant, which is rare but still possible in canines, cheese can be a great treat. Many kinds of cheese can be high in fat, so go for low-fat varieties like cottage cheese or mozzarella. Cheese is one of the treats I use as a high-value reward. Chocolate. No, dogs should not eat chocolate. This is not just an old wives' tale. Chocolate contains very toxic substances called methylexanines, which are stimulants that stop a dog's metabolic process. Even just a little bit of chocolate, especially dark chocolate, can cause diarrhea and vomiting. A large amount can cause seizures, irregular heart function, and even death. Do not have chocolate in an accessible location. If your dog does ingest chocolate, contact a veterinarian or pet poison helpline as soon as possible. Cinnamon. No, cinnamon is not okay for dogs. While cinnamon is not actually toxic to dogs, it's probably best to avoid it. Cinnamon and its oils can irritate the insides of dogs' mouths, making them uncomfortable and sick. It can lower a dog's blood sugar too much and can lead to diarrhea, vomiting, increased or decreased heart rate, and even liver disease. If they inhale it in powder form, cinnamon can cause difficulty breathing, coughing, and choking. Coconut. Yes, coconut is okay for dogs. This funky fruit contains lauric, which strengthens the immune system by fighting off viruses. It can also help with bad breath and clearing up skin conditions like hot spots, flea allergies, and itchy skin. Coconut milk and coconut oil are safe for dogs too. Just be sure your dog doesn't get its paws on the furry outside of the shell, which can get lodged in the throat. Corn. Yes, dogs can eat corn. Corn is one of the most common ingredients in most dog foods. However, the cob can be hard for a dog to digest and may cause an intestinal blockage. So if you're sharing some corn, make sure it is off the cob. Eggs. It's okay for dogs to eat eggs. Eggs are safe for dogs as long as they are fully cooked. Cooked eggs are a wonderful source of protein and can help an upset stomach. However, re eating raw egg whites can give dogs biotin deficiency. So be sure to cook the eggs all the way through before giving them to your pet. Fish. Yes, dogs can eat fish. Fish contains good fats and amino acids, giving your dog a nice health boost. Salmon and sardines are especially beneficial. Salmon because it's loaded with vitamins and protein and sardines because they have soft, digestible bones for extra calcium. 
With the exception of sardines, be sure to pick out all the tiny bones, which can be tedious, but is definitely necessary. Never feed your dog uncooked or undercooked fish, only fully cooked and cooled, and limit your dog's fish intake to no more than twice a week. Garlic and onion. No, dogs shouldn't eat garlic or onions. Onions, leeks, and chives and garlic are part of the allium family, and it is five times more toxic to dogs than the rest of the allium plants. Garlic can create anemia in dogs, causing side effects such as pale gums, elevated heart rate, weakness, and collapse. Poisoning from garlic and onions may have delayed symptoms, so if you think your dog may have eaten some, monitor him or her for a few days, not just right after consumption. Ham. Yes, dogs can eat ham. Ham is okay for dogs to eat, but certainly isn't the healthiest for them. Ham is high in sodium and fat, so while sharing a small piece is all right, it shouldn't be a continuous habit. Honey. Yes, dogs can eat honey. Honey is packed with countless nutrients such as vitamins A, B, C, D, E and K, potassium, calcium, magnesium, copper, and antioxidants. No wonder we call it nature's wonder food. Feeding dogs small amounts of honey can help with allergies because it introduces small amounts of pollen to their systems, building up immunity to allergens in your area. In addition to consuming honey, the sticky spread can also be used as a toxic treatment for burns and superficial cuts ice cream well you already know i'm guilty of giving my dogs ice cream no dogs shouldn't eat ice cream as refreshing of a treat as ice cream is it contains lots of sugar so it is best not to share with your dog also some canines have an intolerance to lactose to avoid the milk altogether freeze chunks of strawberries raspberries apples and pineapples and give them to your dog as a sweet icy treat if you have given your dog ice cream in the past or are considering giving it to them in the future this is how we introduced ice cream to our Siberians, Bodie and Reagan. We start off with a small amount, like a teaspoon, just so they can lick it and taste it. And it's never any other flavor other than vanilla. We do not set them down with an entire scoop or bowl of ice cream. It's always just a spoonful. Macadamia nuts. No, dogs should not eat macadamia nuts. These are some of the most poisonous foods for dogs. Macadamia nuts are part of the pro protokay family and can cause vomiting, increased body temperature, inability to walk, and lethargy. Even worse, they can affect the nervous system. Never feed your dog macadamia nuts. Milk. Yes, dogs can have cow's milk, but be cautious. Some dogs are lactose intolerant and don't digest milk well. While it is okay for dogs to have a little milk, owners should be cognizant of the symptoms of lactose intolerant and might want to stick to giving their dogs water. Peanut butter. Yes, peanut butter is okay for dogs. Peanut butter can be an excellent source of protein for dogs. It contains heart healthy fats, vitamins B and E and niacin, Raw unsalted peanut butter is the healthiest option because it doesn't contain xylitol, a sugar substitute that can be toxic to dogs. Peanuts. Yes, dogs can eat peanuts. Unlike almonds, peanuts are safe for dogs to eat. They're packed with good fats and proteins that can benefit your dog. Just be sure to give peanuts in moderation, as you don't want your dog taking in too much fat, which can lead to pancreas issues. Also, avoid salted peanuts. Popcorn. Yes, dogs can eat popcorn. Unsalted, unbuttered, plain air popped 
popcorn is okay for your dog in moderation. It contains riboflavin and thiamine, both of which promote eye health and digestion, as well as small amounts of iron and protein. Be sure to pop the kernels all the way before giving them to your dog, as unpopped kernels could become a choking hazard. Pork. Yes, dogs can eat pork. Pork is a highly digestible protein packed with amino acids and it contains more calories per pound than other meats. Pork also may be less likely to cause an allergic reaction in some pets compared to other meat. Quinoa. Yes, quinoa is okay for dogs. Quinoa is actually an ingredient in some high quality dry dog foods. The strong nutritional profile of quinoa makes it a healthy alternative to corn, wheat, and soy, starches that are often used to make kibble. Salmon. Yes, dogs can eat salmon as we talked about earlier. Fully cooked is an excellent source of protein, good fats, and amino acids. It promotes joint and brain health and gives dog immune systems a nice boost. However, raw or uncooked salmon contains parasites that can make dogs very sick, causing vomiting, diarrhea, dehydration, and in extreme cases, even death. Be sure to cook salmon all the way through. The FDA recommends at least 145 degrees Fahrenheit and the parasites should cook off. Shrimp. Yes, shrimp is okay for dogs. A few shrimp every now and then is fine for your dog, but only if they're fully cooked and the shell, including the tail, head, and legs, is removed completely. Shrimp are high in antioxidants, vitamins B12 and phosphorus, but also low in fat calories and carbohydrates. Tuna. Yes, dogs can eat tuna. In moderation, cooked fresh tuna is an excellent source of omega-3 fatty acids, which promotes heart and eye health. As for canned tuna, it contains small amounts of mercury and sodium, which should be avoided in excess. A little bit of canned tuna and tuna juice here and there is fine. Prepared only in water, not oil, as long as it doesn't contain any spices. Turkey. Yes, dogs can eat turkey. Turkey is fine for dogs as long as it is not covered in garlic, which can be very toxic to dogs and seasonings. Also, be sure to remove excess fat and skin from the meat and don't forget to check for bones. Poultry bones can splinter during digestion, causing blockage or even tears in the intestines. Wheat grains. Yes, dogs can eat wheat and other grains. Dogs do not have to be grain-free. It is perfectly okay for them to have grains. In fact, grains like wheat and corn are great sources of protein, essential fatty acids, and fiber. If your dog has certain allergies, however, it might be best to avoid grains, but it truly depends on your dog. Yogurt. Yes, yogurt is okay for dogs. Plain yogurt is a perfectly acceptable snack for dogs. However, some canines have trouble digesting it. If your dog can digest it, the active bacteria in yogurt can help strengthen the digestive system with probiotics. Be sure to skip over yogurts with added sugars and artificial sweeteners. We're going to take a short break here, and when we come back, we're going to learn all about... A little dog named Bo. Earlier, you learned all about First Paw Coffee Company, and now I'm going to tell you about its Road Trip and Blend. First Paw Coffee Company's Road Trip and Blend is a light roast of South American origin with tasty notes of citrus, milk, chocolate, and cream. Road Trippin' is inspired by car rides with the pups, roller coasters, and music festivals. Be sure to go to firstpaw.coffee forward slash free to be entered to win a bunch of cool prizes. That's firstpaw.coffee forward slash free. Okay, you guys, earlier I told you we're going to talk about a little dog named Bo. Did you guess what type of dog he is? Did you also guess which president had Bo in the White House? Well, President Obama had little Bo in the White House, and Bo was a Portuguese water dog. So let's learn all about the Portuguese water dog. 
So Portuguese water dogs are super smart and very biddable, meaning he's easy to train and eager to please. The breed can be groomed in two styles, the retriever clip, which the entire coat is clipped to one inch in length with the tail tip at full length, or the more check me out lion clip where the coat on the hind quarters and muzzle is clipped down to the skin. Let's learn a little bit about their history. The Portuguese water dog once lived all along Portugal's coast and was used to herd fish into nets, retrieve lost tackle, and act as a messenger between ships and shore. Fishermen counted on the, lo- on the strong and muscular dogs to be hardworking and seaworthy. They would ride in trawlers from the warm Atlantic waters of Portugal to the freezing cold waters off the coast of Iceland. Technology eventually laid him off from his job, but the breed is still used for water rescue. They have an affectionate, adventurous, and athletic temperament. They are ranked 50th out of 197 in the AKC breed popularity, and males are between 20 and 23 inches tall, with females being 17 to 21 inches tall. Males weigh between 42 and 60 pounds, while females weigh 35 to 50 pounds. They have a life expectancy of 11 to 13 years, and they are classified in the working group. The general appearance, well, this highly intelligent utilitarian breed is distinguished by two coat types, either curly or wavy, an impressive head of considerable breadth and well-proportioned mass, a ruggedly built, well-knit body, and a powerful, thickly-based tail, carried gallantly or used purposefully as a rudder. The Portuguese water dog provides an indelible impression of strength, spirit, and soundness. The Portuguese water dog should do well on a high-quality dog food, whether commercially manufactured or home prepared with your veterinarian supervision and approval. Any diet should be appropriate to the dog's age. Some dogs are prone to getting overweight, so watch your dog's calorie in consumption and weight level. Treats can be an important aid in training, but giving too many can cause obesity. Learn about which human foods are safe for dogs and go back and listen to my list. Check with your vet if you have any concerns about your dog's weight or diet. Clean, fresh water should be available at all times. The Portuguese water dog's dense, profuse coat is hypoallergenic but requires regular and extensive grooming. The coat ranges in appearance from tight and curly to loose and wavy. It may be kept in the lion clip where the coat or on the hindquarters and muzzle is clipped to the skin or the retriever clip where the entire coat is clipped to one inch in length and follows the outline of the dog. Beyond regular grooming weekly, an occasional bath will keep the porty clean and looking his best. An athletic, active breed, the Portuguese water dog requires vigorous exercise every day to keep him healthy and happy. This can come in the form of long daily walks and play sessions with his owner. This extremely versatile breed also exercises mind and body by participating in canine sports such as obedience, tracking, agility, rally, dock diving, and other activities that can be enjoyed by dog and owner. For many enthusiasts, the most special of all the training and exercise options for the porty is water work. The Portuguese water dog is very intelligent and responds well to obedience training. He is demanding of attention and human contact and greets friends and family with unbridled enthusiasm. The breed often thinks independently and a porty may sometimes challenge his owner's will. He requires positive training methods as well as daily mental and physical exercise. Porties can sometimes be too exuberant for families with very young children. Portuguese water dogs are generally healthy and responsible breeders test their stock for health disorders and communicate with other dedicated breeders regularly. 
working together for breed health and preservation of the breed's unique qualities. A Porty's ears should be checked regularly for signs of infection and the teeth should be brushed often using a toothpaste designed for dogs. So I told you guys earlier that the 44th president, Barack Obama, owned two water dogs named Bo and Sonny. The Portuguese water dog was recognized by the AKC in 1983 and its 128th breed. The Portuguese water dog coat is profuse, non-allergenic, non-shedding, and waterproof. The Porty also has webbed feet. When Portugal faced social upheaval in the early 20th century, Dr. Vasco Buensuedi, a wealthy Portuguese shipping magnet and dog fancier, took it upon himself to save the Porty breed. It is now time for our calendar of events. For those that are listening locally on KVRF or our current and past clients, stay tuned for important announcements for other listeners. Stick around and you might learn something cool. So we're continuing on with the ever-packed eventful February, which is Dog Training Education Month. Did you know that February 14th is Pet Theft Awareness Day? Like, who would seriously steal a dog on Valentine's Day anyway? But, okay, let's be aware. February 19th, National Boston Terrier Day. These little gentlemen have been a part of our training programs on many occasions. Do you have one of these little dogs? Head on over to alaskadogworks.com and type Boston Terrier in the search bar and you can learn all about how to make your Boston Terrier one of the best trained dogs. February 20th is Love Your Pet Day. Like we need a day for that? I'm pretty sure I love my pet every day. What about you guys? In early April, we will be at the Matsu Outdoorsman Show at the Alaska State Fairgrounds in Palmer for this three-day event. Come out and say hello. We like it when you guys stop by to say hi. We will also have all of our coffee blends on sale, a bunch of gear, and you can learn all about our Adventure Dog Club just in time for spring. We are excited about this one. It was canceled last year because of COVID, but this year is supposed to be bigger than ever. Not only will we be there, but there will also be food trucks, live events, demonstrations, and much more. This is the premier event for anyone that is interested in getting outdoors in Alaska. On April 17th, we will be starting our group classes in the park. They will be held at Wonderland Park in Wasilla at 1130. These are free for our current and past clients and are part of your training package. If you are not a client or just want to check us out, this is a great way to do so. We do have a nominal drop-in fee. We are gathering gear for our first ever nose work class as well as our first ever tri ball class. And Robert will be doing some pack walks again this summer too. If you want to get an idea of what we will be doing, head on over and watch The Pack on Amazon Prime Video. It was such a great show. Did you know that every Wednesday and Sunday night we do a Facebook Live at 7 p.m.? Be sure to check that out. If you miss the live broadcast, you can always tune in later as well. And you guys, those Facebook Lives, I always give some good tips and tricks. Also, stay tuned for info about the Summer Festival, how you can train your dog to run in the Alaska Dog Works Dry Land Derby this fall, and much more. As always, you can keep up to date by following us on our social channels. Just search Dog Works Radio. And for more training tips and tricks and to learn how to schedule a free discovery call to talk with us about how to make your dog one of the best, visit alaskadogworks.com. And one little thing, tell your friends about us. It's the single best thing you can do to help out our show. Send them a link to this episode and they too will become a rabid listener just like you. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by First Paw Coffee Company. Learn more at firstpaw.coffee. 
from First Paw Media. This is Dog Works Radio. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we invite you to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll find a link on the episode notes. You can tap or swipe on the episode cover art, and you'll see some offers from our sponsors. You can support our show by supporting them. If you like what you have heard, we would love it if you could give us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe too. Your hosts are Robert and Michelle Forto. Our producer is Robert Forto and created for First Paw Media. You can support this podcast on patreon.com forward slash First Paw Media. Did you know that Alaska Dog Works trains service dogs for those in need throughout North America? Each and every service dog that is trained through the Lead Dog Service Dog Program and Michelle Forto and her team has an individual training plan. We train for autistic, mobility, psychiatric, and PTSD for our soldiers for service work. If you know of someone that may need a service dog, please take a moment and check out Alaska Dog Works on social media and at alaskadogworks.com.